This is the podcast, not an interview. This is a conversation. No gimmicks, just reasons. 84 reasons. Come holler at me. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Gator Nation was good. <laughs> I got to take a quick break real quick to make sure you guys understand that while I appreciate all the support you uh, you guys give me and I love the support, make sure you support these student athletes by going to the best, the greatest NIL platform in the country. We're talking about Florida Victorious. And when you become a member, make sure you go to the coupon code and type in 84 Reasons. I know you're saying to yourself, what do I get? You get 20% off your first month's membership. That's 20% off. But the only way you get it is by typing 84 Reasons in the coupon code. That's Florida Victorious. If you love the orange and blue, like I know you do, like I know we do, make sure you type in 84 Reasons in the coupon code to get 20% off. That's 20% off your first month's membership. Now let's get back to the action. And listen, man, before we even jump into it, man, make sure you guys, man, go to Florida Victorious. Make sure you put 84 Reasons in the coupon code to get 20% off your first uh, your first month's membership. That's Florida Victorious. 84 Reasons in the coupon code to get 20% off your first month's membership. Now let's get back to the episode. I just said this man from Homestead, but went to Coral Gables. Came up there with them Florida Gators. I, I spent a couple of years with Steve. Steve, man, before we even get into it, man, when you look when you look back on your career, man, with everything you went through, grew through, to know that, and we're going to get to the documentary series, to know that you ended up a national champion, two different coaches, you got to say to yourself, bro, if somebody would have told me to write this script, I couldn't even wrote it like this. No, nah, never, man. Never, never dreamed of it, man. Even just coming to Florida was a dream, uh, coming from – Playing only two years of high school football, no little league, to get in the scholarship with Florida was a dream come true. Not let alone to come and win a national championship, man. It's just you can't plan it any better, man. Most of us come from humble beginnings. I mean, yourself included. But the one thing I remember about you, Steve, you never showed it. Like people, like you know how a lot of times we know that what we got in Florida was not a reflection of our home lives <laughs> at all. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a reflection at all. But for a per- from a person that came from humble beginnings, man, that never ever, you never ever made excuses. You would always say, "Man, I'm just putting on for the crib, putting on for my mom, you know, my siblings." Just talk about your mindset, man, because you don't know what you did. I can't speak for every other player. <laughs> what you did for me, I mean, and my locker was directly across from you. You were by me. <laughs> I used to be like, "Look, man, if I have a bad day, I look across there, and I see Steve Harris, man. I, hey, that boy, that make it all worthwhile to me." <laughs> Man, I just, you know, try to go out there and give them all, man. Um, and then with my teammates, man, I just showed them love, man. I grew up uh, with a lot of brothers and sisters, so I always had that family bond. And, and you know, I, I always just put family above everything. So when I came to Florida, um, having my, my oldest brother leave me when I was nine, uh, going to prison, um, and coming in and, and getting guys like y'all around me, man, y'all became my big brothers. So y'all, y'all really became my family. So... I mean, I did everything to protect all my teammates as far as when we was out. And then when we was on that field, man, I was just going to go hard, man. I, I wouldn't shy away from anything. So, But it, it was y'all, man. The energy y'all gave me, man. The love y'all showed me coming in as a freshman, man. It really meant a lot to me, man. I looked up to you guys, man, for real. Y'all boys a little bit different, man. You, Ray, y'all boys are different. <laughs> listen, number, one, number one, I was so happy when they did two things. I can't speak for no other tight end. Ray McDonald got on my nerves and said, bro, you, you, you need to slide inside, bro. This, this ain't going to work. Like, I can appreciate the fact that you were trying to make the squad, but I'm trying to look good on tape. You, you don't need to slide in there, bro. I ain't got time. Because he had that different kind of lower body strength. You couldn't yeah. move, Ray. And I'm like, bro, listen to me. But just from word to the wise, bro. I know I got a little strength on me. But listen, Ray, 
Take a little easy on you. And mind you, they always had that smile on the face, just like you. But y'all boys was all business, man. Like I, I, I can, I can say this though. Was it a culture shock though? Because coming from Coral Gables all the way up the games, but that's a total different part of Florida. Total different, just wait, because you used to seeing water, at least being right. close by. The water yeah. huh, where are we going? Like, man, we still got two miles when we get I mean, out seventy five. What was that like for you? It was, it was definitely a culture shock. I mean, I had. I mean, you know, we got Alligator Alley down there in Everglades, but I had never seen the Alligator Top until I got to Florida. Um, just, you know, Lake Atlas and the, the country, back roads, man, it, it definitely was a, a culture shock. Um, just being so small, um, everybody, everything's like right there and it's only revolving around Florida. You know, Miami is a big area. Um, but it was fun getting adjusted, man. Uh, something inside of me, I felt like I was a country boy. I uh, got a chance to go uh, hunting and haul hunting with Brian Crom and Shannon Crowder and them, and going up to Georgia and got a chance to wrestle some alligators and get in the haul pens. And so I only, it just became a part of me, man. I, I love it. So what, so what happens, Steve, when you go back home and they say, hey, man, what was you, what was you doing when he was calling you? Oh, I was out there uh, uh, wrestling them alligators. Like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was out there. And, and then they say, well, hold on, hold on. So who you doing it from? Well, it's a dude named Brian Crum, man. You know, he from a you know little town in Georgia, yeah. right? You know, yeah. uh, he said, but Channing Crowder, where he from? Oh, he's from Atlanta. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a blend. But you and you, you, you really, really like took the whole Gainesville coach and said, look, man, I, I get Florida. That's one big, huge thing. But I'm trying to enjoy this college got to embrace atmosphere, it. man. Got to embrace it. So you go from saying, well, if I'm going to be on these back roads, let me go hunt some of these uh, wild hogs. Go, <laughs> you know, uh, rather some of these games. But it made I, you more, but listen, for what you did on the field, <clears throat> it made you more well around Because what y'all have to do in that interior D-line, that's a, they can do a documentary series on that by itself. Right. <laughs> right. Now, just, uh, you know, getting over fears. You know, not having any fears, you know what I mean? If I see another human being can go out there and, and conquer this animal or creature or whatever, I, I feel like I could do the same. I mean, we both got blood in our body, so I don't, there's nothing nothing about me ever going to shy away from nothing. So uh, that was all part of the process and just getting to know those guys and bonding. So uh, it just made it all worthwhile. Talking with Steve Harris, born in Homestead Hospital. Went to Coral Gables High School. Yes, yes. Now got a neck. Now got that natty. You know, <laughs> SEC champion played under Runs. Got recruited by Ron Zook. Yep. Ended up with Urban Meyer. Man, obviously you don't have to tell me about Ron Zook, but what is it about Urban Meyer that people get it wrong about? Because he got such a long resume. Uh, like, what they get it wrong about when it comes to? Um, they might think it's a gimmick, uh, or think like what is he doing is is, is for himself. But uh, he just has a a different type of way of trying to get to the players. Uh, he's really no nonsense, but he actually really loves the players. And I think that's what uh, gets misunderstood. I think that's how uh, some of the players, after we left in 06, kind of got away from him. Because, you know, you win, and that culture of winning comes in, and then you got young players, and uh, the coach is going to show them a side of him that he didn't show us. He had to be real hard. But they get to see him and see him be soft and they don't tell them they love him and he love him like this and they get to see a different side of him. So I think the players kind of, I won't say lost respect for him, but he kind of lost that fear for some of the uh, the players after that second championship. So, but I think they just get, they uh, misunderstand that he really loves the player, man. What was it about Ron Zook that prepared you? Because, I mean, listen, love, you know, Urban Meyer, we know what it is. Two national championships in three years is unprecedented. But 2000. Six was predicated on 2003, 2002. Then y'all boys came in behind. How much? Urban, Urban won it. <clears throat> Excuse me, Urban won it, and we gonna give him that. How much did being another guy like people talk about no nonsense? Urban no nonsense, but Zook, that's a different kind of beast right there. How much did playing under him prepare you for a guy like Urban Mike? Uh, really, uh, Zook, man, he just really taught me uh, family atmosphere. You know, when we were there, man, we did everything together. Uh, all, everybody hung out from the defensive backs to the wide receivers. A lot, it was it was no separation between any of the groups. So that um, that family atmosphere and that mindset, man, helped me as far as when he when the Urban brought in his recruits, his freshmen and stuff, just bringing them right into the family, like Spikes, um, Percy, Brandon James, 
all those guys being able to give them that family culture. So and, and then Zook, you know, he arrived for us. You know, he go to bat for us, man. He he, he down at the frat house knocking on the door when they <laughs> jump one of our teammates. You know what I mean? He he ready to go to war for us. So uh, Zook really just instilled that, man. You gotta have your brother's back. You know what I mean? He definitely showed showed us that, and I believe my senior year, um, we, with all our seniors that were there, I think we had like 22 or something like that. Um, all seniors. So for us to stick together, man, and fight it out, just showed that you know we, we stuck together as a family, and was able to do it. Now, Steve, was you a part of that? I mean, when I when I heard about the whole Ron Zook frat house, I'm like, now, now, obviously, I believe that. I ain't, ain't nobody have to make me think, no, that, you know, that happened. Like, you, Ron Zook, one of those people, once you know him, like, yeah, bro, like, if somebody was saying, who was the coach that would have went there? Oh, Zook would have went there. Any raining, oh, hell, yeah. tornado, let's go. Like, what? It's true story. What, what happens when he say, we going? What? We going to the frat house, and anybody, anybody in there that's on the other side of that door going to get it. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Look, we, we had a meeting. They, they, you know, they end up jumping one of our teammates. This wasn't happening, man. We had a team meeting. Say, let's ride. Hey, look, we we marching down Frat Road. It's time to it's time to go. So we, you know, <laughs> it was it was more of a just like, hey, y'all jump them, come outside now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing was gonna happen, but we were ready. But you know, look. Zook here at first, man. He just showed us that he had our, had our back, man. And a coach like that, you'll go to war for. What I remember about you is I remember that Urban Meyer was doing, getting ready to do a press conference or something. And you had just called him and said, listen, man, I got an A. I'm good. I remember, I remember him telling the media, hey, just got the phone with Steve Harris. He said he's good. <laughs> a lot of people thought that when he was saying that, he was talking about your eligibility. He was like, nah. I no, I, he he's on schedule to graduate, get his internship, and that's what that's what people don't get. They thinking, oh, he no man, you getting suspended was for you. It's like no, Steve gonna be on the team in the fall. But right. if I suspend him, that's when Steve Harris said, oh wait a minute, bro, I got to get I got to get right. And thank God for them summer B's, summer yeah. A's to really help you get over. What did that mean to you? What did that mean to you to know? Because you know. Players having a head coach cell phone, that don't happen. Like, <laughs> you, they don't even give that out. They know that you can text, hey, man, I'm good. And he was so proud of you because I heard him say, man, most people saying he wouldn't be able to get it done, but he did. What did that mean to you to know that you could text him and let him know, coach, I'm good? And he knows, forget the fall. He's thinking about the rest of your life. This man going to graduate, yeah. internship, yeah. and y'all just happened to go on and win that natty that year. Yeah, no, nah, it meant it meant a lot to me, you know. He, uh, that's what he really wanted to see from me. He wanted to see me uh, graduate, you know. He wanted it for me. Uh, it was close. I knew I was right there, uh, but he didn't want me to slack off. He didn't want me to slip up. He wanted to make sure I got all my classes and um, and made sure I, I got that paper, you know. And I appreciate him for that, you know. It's big for me, big for my family to be, to say I graduated from the University of Florida. Um, a lot of people can't say that, so man, it, it's just big, man. It means a lot to me. And to have his number, um, one day he actually took me and Tebow to a golf tournament. And it was just me and Tebow, man. And he sat me down and talked to me, just told me that he believed in me, uh, believed that I was a leader on this team, and he wanted to, to help me do it the right way. So I just uh, I appreciate him, man. I appreciate him, Def, for, for being there for me. What did it say about you, though? Because, you know, as coaches, we are coaches, they know us. In a way that we don't even know us. They they just know us. For him to say, if I suspend Steve, he gonna get it. I'm not playing with you because he's talking to Mama Harris. He do, what he told her ain't what he told you. He she's saying I want him to graduate. I I remember runs. I talked to Ron Zook, but now you you the coach, right? Yeah. So you got to take on what he told me. He said, all right, if I can't live up to what I told Mama, she gonna think I'm a fraud. She gonna think that I don't care about the championships because championships are great. You want to have them. But your life is in everything. To know that right. he said, if I do this to Steve, watch what he did. I want him. That boy said, I got an A in it. What you, what you mean? No, 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 no. I ain't getting no yeah. pass. I got an A. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Everything's good. But, to, but, what, but what did that do to you, though, man? Because what is that feeling when you know, bro, I just graduated? What you mean? Like, I just did what I needed to do to walk across that stage, bro. Yeah, nah, man. It was, it was a, a great feeling, man. It's just. It's big. University of Florida they don't get no bigger. I mean, people uh, die to try to get into this school, man. And and to know that I got that paper and to be able to call my mom and let her know that hey, I'm graduating. I'm gonna get my cap and gown. Come on up, man. It was, it was it's a great feeling, man. And 
it's just something she's cherished to this moment. You know, she got she got all of our uh, graduation paper, and for me to add mine to it, man, it it's just big, man. I'm looking at uh, I'm on a, I'm on I'm on Facebook one day. I see Steve. I see him in the bar. I hear him say, "Hey man, we we shooting a documentary." I'm like, "What the hell is Steve talking about?" Like, <laughs> he, he say say Netflix, and I'm like, "Netflix? Be doing something with Netflix?" Mind you, that's all you said though. You didn't give no you know. Yeah. You about it. Then all of a sudden, I see Swamp Kings, Netflix, the 2006, 2009 Florida games. I'm like, this boy is shooting something with Netflix. <laughs> hey, I know it's coming out sometime later this month. Man, I know that y'all was that impactful because you know you from South Man. Florida. So the fact that the you didn't snatch you, right? <laughs> didn't yeah. snatch you. It's it's crazy. But you know, we, we remember you know those documentaries with the 30 for 30s with the you and all them coaches mm-hmm. and players. But to know that y'all boys were so pivotal to not just Florida, but to the college football landscape, they say, Hey bruh, because I remember they used to say Man, that 2006, 2009, so man, it was some stuff that went on. Like, what you mean? They say somebody will have to document this. So mind you, we don't, this is way too much about a Netflix screen and all that. But what is that like, though, uh, Steve? You know, y'all sitting down with them cameras, they putting makeup on. You say, what do you want to do with that, Steve? We can do it like that. Right, like, like what, what was that like for you, man? Because man, they had it, it was, have you on there. It was the coolest experience ever, man. I, I mean, Netflix, man. They they got that bag. <laughs> they, they got that bag. So it, it was dope, man. Um I filmed with them for like three days. I'm not sure exactly what's all gonna be in the documentary as far as what they're gonna edit in or edit out. But um it was fun filming with them, just recapping our our, our championship run. Um from my perspective, from coming in, uh the coaching change and having Meyer, uh first year coach. Um it, it was love, man. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to explain, man, just to get that call because, you know, I play inside, I play defensive line. You, you don't feel like you one of those guys that get all the limelight, you know, but for them to give me that call, uh, they actually tracked my wife down. Uh, they called her phone first. I was like, how you get my Netflix got that? <laughs> <laughs> they called my wife. I was like, we're trying to reach your husband. And uh, she put me in contact with him, but. It was fun, man. They wanted to interview a lot of the teammates, but uh, some of them declined it, just um, not being sure what was going to be put in there. Uh, a lot of people were skeptical. I was too, but I know I was a big part of uh, the culture there. And so anything, like I said before, anything for the Gator Nation, I was willing to do, man. And it, it's just fun, man, watching how they work. I mean, we, did, we had a little Airbnb, and the people in the neighborhood was cutting the grass. Like a lawn care service people, and the lady was like, Hey, go tell them stop cutting the grass, whatever you got to give them. I was like, Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, listen, whatever you got to give them, stop whatever you got to give them. Look, need, the people stop cutting the grass, man. They stop hold on, hold on. Cutting. Hold on. Ice so, cream you sit, truck. so you sit there like that, the ice cream truck on. got to go too. The ice cream oh, truck. Tell them, you hey. sitting there, right? You sitting there, right? And you like, Hey, man, uh, y'all want to wait till the grass? No, no, we ain't gonna wait till they stop cutting the grass. No, tell them, oh, yo. Cut that out, shut that down for a second. It, it was a guy that they had that she say, Hey, go do what you need to do. And he just go in his pocket and the grass stop. <laughs> the ice cream truck man leaves. No, no, they could have stopped hold the hell hold on, hold on, hold on. I promise you. <laughs> so basically, so basically, when you when you and your when you and your wife y'all left and y'all done. That joke was going over there every week after, like, oh, they, do, they, do they want me to shut it down? <laughs> I made more money getting shut down. Right, and that's you the guy that was yeah. yeah, no, that, I'm not that guy. <laughs> it was no, cool, man. man. I, I think it's dope, man, Steve. The fact that, like you said, you said something that I, that I, you know, I think the, the listeners need. You said I was a big part of that culture, and that's the hardest thing to build in college. It ain't. I mean, you got the talent, you got the facilities, you got the resources, you got the coaches. But you got to get jokers to buy in. And the thing about Urban, Urban had to take his guys and, and Zook guys right. and say, hey, man, this is what we're going to do. Could you explain what them practices were like? Because, man, I used to, they used to talk about, like, bruh, listen to me. And out there on that grass, we were not friends. I'm telling you, it was crazy out there. But the result on Saturday showed you why we went crazy out there on that practice field. Man, listen, uh, Urban and his workout tactics, even just before practice, the workouts, man, like, extreme. 
I was talking about you dying every day, every day. I remember we had like the massacres, like six o'clock massacres where you come in and you, everybody got on face paint and all kind of stuff. And you just in the weight room, six o'clock in the morning, going crazy. Talk about nobody's walking out of there alive. Everybody throwing up. Uh, just, man, if, <laughs> it's hard to put in words the amount of stress you put on your body and, and, and how serious it is. And it's competition. Everything was competitive. You would compete against um, the best person that was across from you. They write it down. Um, every day was, was graded. Every day was graded. It wasn't a day where you went out there that you didn't compete, that you didn't come back with a grade for how you did that day. So it just pushed you to a whole other level, man. And then the practices was just was all out, man. All out. Uh, it was almost like war. Uh, Irvin, Irvin didn't play, man. And then I, I just remember... Our first year, he was there. We lost three games. And uh, he had us come into the stadium like 5 o'clock in the morning, bro. We ran every step of that stadium. When I tell you every step, I'm talking fire exit, handicap steps, anything. <laughs> so we ran every step around the loop, every step in the whole stadium. We had to run it three times. And it was the most grueling thing I ever did in my life, man. I was like, I don't never want to do it again. <laughs> but... We ended up losing one that year, so the follow class had to uh, <laughs> had to run that stadium one time. But man, that's something you'll never forget. Now, nowadays, uh, we we are in the era uh, of NIL. You know, kids, you know, being able to make money off their name and image likeness. Could you imagine if NIL was out in y'all in y'all era? Just, just from, from a just from a just from a talent exposure personality. Y'all, listen, it would have been one of the things to where Steve Harris would have been saying, man, when I made all this money, man, when I was 20, 20 <laughs> Man, it would have been, what you think that would have been like? Hopefully it could have been before our area and you could have let me hold something. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were looking up to you, man. I remember the state of everybody yelling, true. Man, Look, if that, I, I, man, that's that stuff you can't me. get over, man. If you, if, I, if, it was, if it was my time, Steve, if it was my time to make anything, right? And, and you know, obviously, we don't. The, the big misconception about us is they think we really, really good at life because we, because we can play. <laughs> right? They think, oh, Steve, and got <laughs> no, bro, like, like Nolan Simmons. For those of you who don't know, is over the academic. He's over the. He's over across the hall. Right. The Pell Grants, right? We was up in OS. It was called OS. It ain't called OS now. It ain't called that now. We up in Everybody there. Everybody be at that office. Listen, listen. Man, Cameron used to be a lot of our uh, academic advisor, like I too. We supposed to be up in there trying to get, you know, uh, we supposed to be in there trying to get a uh, get our uh, work done. No, <laughs> we in there we, we trying to get uh, we in there trying to get loans. And we Where's Nolan? Nolan <laughs> line, Nolan line have twenty people in there waiting to see him. Everybody oh, so, want oh, Pell yeah. Grant. Everybody. Yeah. But if I if, if I was able to to have gotten the, the likeness and name is likeness stuff, man, it would have been great, man. Um, we had a lot of times that people, like you said, Ray McDonald, uh, Marcus Thomas, Jarvis Moss. Uh, mm. Jermaine Cunningham. Oh my God. Uh, we we just had Derek Harvey. I mean, uh, y'all 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 had so many names. It's like this: we used to brag, man. Look, we bragged about y'all, Steve. Because you, you know, brother. we done moved on, right? So people be like, "Y'all boys got like that." So listen, we get to talk about y'all. Can <laughs> yeah, we slip out to say stuff like, "Yeah, that's my cousin. That's my little brother." Yeah, we might have said stuff like, "That's my that's my cousin." He was tight. Like our team was just. The D line, though, for those who don't know, the two most intriguing meeting rooms in football. The D line, because you know, y'all got so, because y'all got so much personality on these teams, right? I mean, you know, with it, and I just appreciate y'all, D lineman, man. You and Bobby and P. Lee, and right? Ray, and Travis Harris and right. you know, Jay Moss. Yeah, I mean, Jay Moss, the only dude I know from Denver. I mean, he's the only guy I know from <laughs> I mean, My boy came way from Denver to come right. all the way to games. And I was right. thinking about he had against, you know, South Carolina and all that. But with everything y'all y'all meant to the squad, they don't win it without y'all, bro. See, I know we hear about the Pounces and Percy and Tebow and, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know yeah. Chris Reed, and rightfully so, Lewis Murphy and uh, uh, Dallas Bacon, all of them, Aaron Hernandez, yeah. Denise Syndrome. But... 
when people say, man, Brandon Spikes was what, three times first team all the SEC, two times first team all America, because he can run and hit people. I don't got to worry about the line and touching me, bro. Line and yeah. touching me. Why yeah. would I work on, get, and you got to work on getting off that guard. <laughs> That guard, they don't get me. One guard. One guard. That boy, listen, listen. That boy, that boy said, listen, the only spikes I knew before Brandon was Takeo, and that's his cousin who went to Auburn. <laughs> right? I said, but B Spike was a bad, bad man. But but I but I'm proud of you for this reason, this reason alone. You come from where you came from, the end of where you ended up without you having that mindset, because Ain't nobody that, that you had us, but it's you. You're like, hey, bro, ain't nobody from where I'm from but me. Ain't nobody got Harris on their back but me. Yeah. And don't nobody know what I told my family, what I'm going to do but me. And I got to change coaches. I went from Spurrier to Zook. You went from Zook to Maya. That's hard. For people who don't know, look, bro, I might not even fit the scheme they run on me. Right, right. I, I might not even, you know, they might, they might look for a reason to say, I don't like that Harris dude. No, you had to tell Urban, listen, bro, I don't, I know you're coming from this place called Utah. I don't even know what the hell Utah is. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'm here to stay, bro. Like, I chose Florida before I chose Zook. Zook right. came to my living room. I just want to say congrats to you, man, because we – Thank you, glory, man. Just, Spurrier, Spurrier started in the 90s. He, unprecedented, right? When Maya got there, I'm like, who is this Urban Maya dude? Like, who, you know, who Nobody dude? knew. Nobody knew. And then, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, we in number one, we in number two, we in number three, we in number four. Oh, yeah, we, oh, yeah, we lost to Ole Miss, right? It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Here come Tebow with the it's, – it's just a bunch of stuff. You a big part of it because, like you said, they said – think about Netflix. They said, if we want Steve, we need to call his wife. Well, who, how the hell y'all know I'm married to her? I, I, I'm proud of being married to her. You know who my wife is, bro? Like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah she was blown, man. She, she had no idea, man. It, it, it was big, man, just – being a part of it, man, uh, knowing that I was a senior, knowing I was an anchor, knowing I brought in some of the young guys, uh, well, all the young guys. You know, I, I've been hosting since I was a freshman. You know, I brought uh, most of Marcus Thomas and all the guys I was their host on their business, man. And it's, it's just an honor, man, and a privilege to know that I had such a big part of it, man, and, and that when Gators like yourself, man, you're great to me. You feel me? Like, you were great, for real. Like, I was just telling my son about you. I actually pulled up your highlight on the way here, so you jumping <laughs> over people's head in the stadium yelling your name. Like, you were great to me. So to hear that from you and to know that y'all was bragging on us like that, man, it, it, it means a lot to me, bro. Like, for real, you, Kiwan, uh, Gus, Bobby McCray, Rand Carthon, uh, man, I, I was there with y'all guys, man. So I feel like I got the best crossover between both worlds. I got the young guys with Percy and Dylan and Rainey and Tebow. And then I got y'all, man, Taylor Jacobs. And, you know what I mean? Man, yeah. like y'all, y'all boys were raw, man. Like y'all, y'all showed me a lot, man. And, and I, I credit a lot of that to how y'all brought me in, man. Y'all, y'all let me be a leader young. Y'all showed me the road young. Y'all never tried to impose y'all will on me and y'all let me be me. And that, that mean a lot to me, man. No, listen, you, you earned it all, Steve. And the thing about it is, is everybody, you said it, people are killed to go to Florida, but boy, it's, it's, it's harder to stay in Florida than it is to get there. <laughs> <laughs> like, like getting there is a beast. Don't make no mistake about it. But people go, hey, boy, this is the most prestigious 85 seats in the state. I don't, that's taking nothing away from that team on the panhandle. They ain't taking nothing away from that team no. down south and that team in central Florida and whatever, right? It's the hardest seats to maintain because we getting the best in the country. You don't believe me? Everybody want to win a natty. Everybody go to practice for it. They going to work out for it. Y'all boys was there. Before they even kicked the ball off, you had to be going, hell no. Like, we here. Like, everybody watching us. It. It's like you said to yourself, bro, I thought Gainesville was part. We a long way from Florida. We a Man. long way from Florida. It was a dream, yeah. bro. It was a dream. It didn't even feel real, man. It's like it, we had a national champion, like the biggest. Forget a Super Bowl, the national championship. Yeah, man. Like, I, I mean, it was like it was a dream, bro. It didn't it, it, cause you know you've been to bowl games and we went to the Outback Bowl and you know the festivities, but to get there, man, it was a dream come true, man. It didn't feel real. All the cameras flashing, the media. It, it was awesome, man. I got it on. 
<laughs> I, got, I got it's something I get to keep with me forever, man. So it's, it's just man, it's awesome, bro. I, I can't even. It's awesome, man. He is Steve Harris, born in home, Homestead. Went to high school in the Coral Gables. Came up to Gainesville. SEC champion, national champion. But more importantly, <laughs> that man got the certificate to say University of Florida. Bachelor of Arts and whatever it is. That man graduated. Because yeah, yeah. they say this. When you go to Florida or any school, they're going to they gonna take every ounce of energy. They're going to take everything from you. You better snatch everything you can from right. it. And listen, I know that I know that ring finger got a bling on it, but now he, he got he got the SEC bling. He got that. Now, so when people, when he get to walk through the state of Florida and people go, man, you ain't, boy, you better act like you know. And we got <laughs> a series coming out. Listen, Steve, yeah. I'm telling you, boy, Love you, boy. I'm super duper happy for you, man. Tell the missus and, and the kitties. I said, what's up, man? Tell them. No, 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 no. I appreciate you calling me a legend. You better tell them, hey, man, daddy was a legend. Why? No. <laughs> I got the patch. Listen, listen. Hey. Most, listen, most people get patches, right, if they go to National Championship. Most no. people get rings. <laughs> Not everybody get a documentary, though. That's no. <laughs> Steven. That's on Netflix. It's Rolodex. I can say, hey, look. Let's watch some swamp kids. I want to know how them boys were. And I get to say, teammate, 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 teammate. <laughs> Hey, listen, man. I, it's because of y'all, man, that I that I get to do it, man. I'm only a legend because of because y'all say I'm a legend. You know what I mean? So if it's coming out of y'all mouth and me, the world to me, man, I'm just a human in this body. But man, I had a great time doing it. I am being true from 84 reasons. No games, no gimmicks, just reason. My reason for the day, this latest installment, national champion, SEC champion, University of Florida graduate. Coral Gables High School, Homestead, yes, yes. South Florida Zone. Yes, yes. Steve Harris, and we out of here. Go Gators. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, boy, listen, tell everybody I said what's up, man. I'm looking forward to that thing coming out. I'm telling you, if your face know, when your face pop up on the screen, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to oh, <laughs> Mom, I made the big time for I'm a bro, Netflix star now. Bro, I don't know if you believe it, but you're a legend to me, man. Hey, hey listen, I believe you. Listen, I, I believe, I, man, listen, I had Dallas on here. He was saying that, man. Look, I, I, when I was there with y'all, man, I, I, I made sure, because, you know, see, this is what people don't know. Them private conversations you have, whatever, my, it's just you and him saying, Steve, you got to show them, man. If you don't do it, they ain't going to do it. No one, I had those conversations with Zook saying, listen, bro, I, right. said, I'm going to get on you, but I'm going to get on you. Right. Talk. If you say something back to me, they going to think they can say something. If right. you just take it, they'll take it. If you, right. if you he said, because guess what? You playing on Saturday. You should be able to take whatever I say <laughs> right. out there on Saturday. Right. And when he said that, now I didn't know he was going to be how he was, but man, let me tell you something. When I was for the, up for the John Mackey Award, I didn't even know who the hell John Mackey was when I was in college, but I know who he is now. He right. said, if, if it comes out when it's supposed to come out, you'll win it. If they delay it, they're going to give it to Keller Winston. I said, all right, cool. I ain't. I ain't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because at, at the end of the day, I enjoy y'all boys more than I, I, man, one day I'm going to sit down, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to just, I'm going to do my own docuseries. series. I'm going to say, listen, I got to <laughs> right. right? I'm going to sit down with them all, one by one, saying, boy, hey, this please is invite what you me. did for me. Please invite me. I would oh, love no, to you, be you are, listen, listen, you are, you are, listen, and, and listen, and, and I'm going to make it to where, wherever you at in the world, I'm coming to you. Just, <laughs> I ain't going to stop nobody cutting no grass. I'm just going to you. <laughs> I ain't giving you no game. You coming like Netflix? All right, no. Nah. <laughs> Listen, I might buy you some lunch or something. Cause Netflix pockets, <laughs> Netflix invented fabric. They don't even got pockets. They, they yeah, got nah. pockets. I'll tell you, they stopped the helicopter from flying. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, you were like, hey, bro, hey, Netflix, did y'all want me to come rock with y'all for real? Come home. <laughs> It's been good, man. Yes, sir, man. It's been a blessing, boy. I appreciate you, boy. We, it's going to air tomorrow. I appreciate you. All right, I got you. I got your number locked in, man. We'll keep in touch. Yes, sir. Love, man. Love, love. I want to just say thank you for all the support you guys been giving us. But make sure, if you do nothing else, Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. As much as I love you guys coming through and showing support, man, I got to make sure you stay around, man. So make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is 84 Reasons. There's no games, no gimmicks. Just like, sharing, and subscribing. And we out.